A number full Wednesday, students! Join me as we learn how to count, solve, and enjoy math. I am Teacher Tin and welcome to our class. For today's session, we're going to talk about integers. Are you ready? Come on and let's begin our number full journey! Today, we're going to talk about integers. As we perform the fundamental operations on integers, we will answer these three questions. First, what are positive and negative numbers? Second, how can a number line help in comparing integers? And third, how can integers be represented by models in real-world situations? I know you're all excited, so let's start answering these questions. Integers consist of two kinds of whole numbers, positive and negative. Have you ever heard this? Where have you used or seen the use of these positive and negative whole numbers? Let me give you an example. Take a look at these balloons and weights. Now let's imagine that these balloons are positive numbers and these weights are negative numbers. This basket has balloons and weights tied to it. One, the balloons pull upwards, positive. Two, the weights drag downwards, negative. To understand integers better, we can plot the numbers on a number line to visualize the information and know the position of the numbers. Number lines can either be horizontal or vertical. One good example of a vertical number line is a thermometer. Look at this red colored room temperature thermometer beside me. Do you know that based on Pagasa's historical data, the highest temperature ever recorded in the Philippines was in Tugigaraw, Cagayan on May 11, 1969 at 42.2 degrees Celsius? How hot can that be? Let's look at this blue-colored room temperature thermometer this time. Do you know that the lowest temperature ever recorded in the Philippines was in Baguio City on January 18, 1961 at 6.3 degrees Celsius? Whoa! That must be cold. Based on these examples, we can call 42.2 as a positive number because it is a number that pulls upwards like the balloons, while we can call 6.3 as a negative number because it is a number that drags downwards like the weights. Now, are you ready to try some more real-life integers? Imagine this, you're in an elevator that went down four floors. Do you think four is a positive or negative number? Awesome! The number four in this picture is a negative number because it is going down. How about if you saw your temperature was two degrees above normal? Do you think two is a positive? Or negative number. Good job! The number 2 in this picture is a positive number because it went up. To make things simple, just remember this. 0 is the middle line. All numbers at the right are positive and all numbers to the left are negative. Now, let's have some examples. A number 5 lies away to the left from 0 is right. It's negative 5. And 10 lies away to the right of 0 is correct. That's positive 10. Before we move on with the fundamental operations involving integers, let's recall the absolute value first. The absolute value of an integer 
is the distance from zero on the number line. The absolute value of positive 6 is 6. And the absolute value of negative 6 is also 6. Thus, opposite integers have the same absolute value. Since we already know what absolute value is, we can now start finding out how to add integers. First, let's learn how to add two positive integers. Adding both positive numbers is just a simple addition. We can add balloons like we are adding positive values so the basket is pulled upwards. Now, what if we're adding two negative numbers? Let's see. Since these integers have the same sign, you can just keep the negative sign and add their absolute value to get the answer. It's basically a simple addition, but this time, the answer is negative. Now, let's try answering these questions. What is negative 12 plus negative 7? You're correct! The answer is negative 19. And how about negative 2 plus negative 2? Awesome! The correct answer is negative 4. You did great! Now let's proceed to the addition of positive integers and negative integers. We can add weights like we are adding negative values and the basket gets pulled downwards. Negative. In adding positive and negative integers, we should always pay close attention to the number with the greatest absolute value in the problem. Let's have this example. Negative 6 plus positive 3. The best way to think about this problem is to use a number line that extends to the negative numbers. Also, Remember our discussion about absolute values. You're starting with a bigger negative number 6 and you're adding 3 to that number which means you are moving 3 spots to the right. Take note that these integers have different signs. To add them, we simply have to subtract the number with the smallest absolute number from the number with the highest absolute value and copy the sign of the number with the highest absolute value. In this equation, 3 is lower than 6, so we must subtract 3 from 6. That would give us 3. Keep in mind that since 6 is higher than 3, we must copy the sign of 6. So, our final answer would be negative 3. Let's take note of the rules in adding integers again. 1. To add integers having the same sign, keep the same sign and add the absolute value of each number. 2. To add integers with different signs, keep the sign of the number with the largest absolute value and subtract the smallest absolute value from the largest. Great! Now let's test your understanding of the lesson. Are you ready? Let's go! For the first question, what is negative 2 plus 4? Good job! The answer will be 2. How about negative 1 plus negative 2? Awesome! The correct answer will be negative 3. You did great! This time, let's try subtracting integers. I think you're ready, so let's go. Subtracting positive numbers is just simple subtraction. We can take away balloons like we are subtracting positive value and the basket gets pulled downwards. Negative. For example, positive 6 minus positive 3 is equal to positive 3. That's very simple. How about subtracting a negative number from a negative number? This means a minus sign is followed by a negative sign. So, this will turn the two signs into a plus sign. For example, 
negative 2 minus negative 4. So, we're changing the two negative signs into a positive. So, the equation now becomes negative 2 plus 4. Let's look at this number line to help you understand better. On the number line, it starts at negative 2. Then, we move forward 4 units, so the answer will be 2. Here's another tip. Remember our rules for adding the similar signs? From this point, the same rules apply. Now, let's see what subtracting positive and negative numbers looks like. In subtracting a negative number from a positive number, you will turn the subtraction sign followed by a negative sign into a plus sign. So now, the equation turns into a simple addition problem. For example, 2 minus negative 3. On the number line, we start at 2. Then we move forward 3 units, so the answer will be 5. Again, upon changing the signs, you can just apply simple addition here. Can you follow? Okay, so at this point, let us review again the rules in subtracting integers. Number 1, subtracting a positive number from a positive number, it's just normal subtraction. 2, subtracting a positive number from a negative number, start at the negative number and count backwards. 3, Subtracting a negative number from a negative number, a minus sign followed by a negative sign turns the two signs into a plus sign. 4. Subtracting a negative number from a positive number, turn the subtraction sign followed by a negative sign into a plus sign. Great! Let's see how much you have understood. Are you up for the challenge? Okay, get ready. First question. What is negative 1 minus negative 3? Correct. The answer is 2. Here's another one. What is 1 minus 3? Good job. The answer is negative 2. Wow. Good job! Now let's go back to our three questions earlier. Integers consist of two kinds of whole numbers, positive and negative. Numbers, anything greater than zero, are described as positive numbers. Whole numbers that are less than zero are known as negative numbers. Negative numbers have a minus sign in front of them to indicate that they are less than zero. A number line helps to visualize the information and know the position of the numbers. Integers are positive and negative numbers. When these numbers are going upwards, they are considered positive. And when they are going downwards, they are considered negative. And that's it for our discussion today. I hope you learned a lot about integers. If you did, click thumbs up and share this video to help students like you to count, solve, and enjoy math. And of course, don't forget to click the subscribe button. Again, this is Teacher Tin and see you on our next Numberful Wednesday.